When we bought our sailboat, the superstructure and the roof were full of holes covered up with pieces of tape. So not only did we completely rebuild the entire structure while also raising it up, but now we're taking the interior to the next level. This is Luke, and I'm Lori, and we bought this hopeless sailboat with the dreams of restoring it so we could see the world ourselves. So if you want to come along for the ride of a lifetime, subscribe to our channel, like this video, and ring that bell. It's a totally free way to keep the journey alive. Hey guys, I'm actually sitting in a wet locker in the head of our, ba our bathroom in our sailboat. And this is a very tight, tight area. So I am the only one qualified because I am the only one who fits in this. So it is my job to build the wet locker and the machine room of the head. And we're still working on this. Like I said, last week we had a lot of um, difficulties over the last month that's why we haven't been posting videos and, and we've been moving really slowly on our uh, on this build of the head and getting everything moving along as we wanted to now this is the most complicated part of the build because there's so much going on in this little tiny area so there's just a lot of details to attend to so we're still working on it there's a lot of things that i want to show you but i haven't finished them just yet so while we were doing this we realized that things are moving really slow and also there's a bunch of things that we don't have necessarily enough expertise to work on ourselves like the ceiling um, the deck head of our sailboat in the main cabinet so we decided we're going to call in some extra help so we got touched with selmo again and he is helping us do that at right now he's helping us work on the windows and showing me exactly how that framing goes remember how we did the framing in the front part in the ford cabin and they turned out so well now we're going to do the same thing except even better in the main cabin so stick with us we're going to show you now how we did the whole ceiling of the main cabin and all of the windows and let me tell you it transforms the boat a hundred percent we've been gaining confidence building our boat interior as we go but this particular part was important for us to bring back a professional because we didn't know the right way to tackle it sure there are best boat roof building practices but we were mainly worried about the boat becoming top heavy and unstable in the water let's simplify these physics Boats have a center of gravity and a center of buoyancy. When the boat is floating upright, both the center of gravity and the center of buoyancy align at midships. Consequently, gravity pulls the boat downward while buoyancy pushes it upward. As the boat tilts or heels over, the center of buoyancy moves outward and away from the center of gravity. At this point, these two forces work against each other. The center of gravity pulls downwards and the center of buoyancy pulls upwards, making the boat want to stand up straight. Ideally, a well-balanced boat acts like this, especially when it's not carrying too much weight. But if there is too much weight up high or a lot of water in the bilge, things can change. The center of gravity moves outward and the center of buoyancy goes in the opposite direction. Now these forces are working together to make the boat tip over. Imagine if we put too much weight in this part of the boat that is far above the center of gravity. This could have some really bad consequences. We've been considering and calculating the interior weight throughout the build, but this is a particularly important step. And that's why we really wanted to talk to someone who knew how to do it correctly. Speaking about too much weight, remember our companion way door fail? Well, we have been looking over all of the amazing and helpful comments that you've made to get us back in the right direction with this door and the decision has been made. 
this heavy stainless steel box is coming down and we're gonna let you know just what we decide and how do we replace it. In the meantime, it made building the ceiling way easier now that we didn't have to build around it. Okay, wait a second. You might have noticed something odd that we haven't mentioned. The guys took a raw piece of Jekishba hardwood and cleaned it up for this very necessary feature in our main cabin. We wanted to create a way that we could steady ourselves when walking around in the cabin, especially when it's healing, but we didn't want it to be intrusive or take away from the clean lines of the boat. So what we did was design a grab rail that follows the line of the deck and the windows and is the perfect height for holding on to. It will be painted the same color as the window frames in order to blend in and not distract from the view. At least that's the idea. Alright, if you would ask me what my favorite part of the interior build of our boat is so far, I would have to say, first off, the windows. The windows make such an obvious impact on the interior of the boat, bringing in much needed light. And the next thing I think I would say is all these little tiny details. Little things that you might not notice when you first enter, but after you start looking around, and then you start seeing these curved edges or all of the attention to detail that we put in. And I really can't wait to show you the details we put off in the head, the bathroom, 
that we're working on right now. We've been a little inconsistent with posting our videos as of lately, but we're going to show you that soon. So make sure you subscribe and do not miss a single part of this process. What my least favorite part is so far is all the decision making. Everything needs to be decided based on how you imagine you will be interacting with the interior in the future. We've based this on our own experiences and also a lot of research, but it's hard sometimes not to feel a little afraid that you could have done something differently or you forgot something. Also, the colors. Deciding on the colors and the interior design is really challenging. Even as artists, it's hard to imagine everything completed. Right now, we're just surrounded by raw brown wood tones, and it's hard to picture what it'll look like in the end. But we're really excited to see the results soon, and we hope you are too. Last week we were talking about how we could make a 34 foot boat feel like a 40 foot boat. Now that comes in in certain design elements and we wanted to apply this technique on our ceiling as well. So as you can see here, this is a stripe that continues all the way down the ceiling of the main cabin. It will continue and line up directly with the companionway hatch and it'll also line up with the staircase. Now what this does is this creates a continuous line and a line that will your eye will follow and give the cabin a sense of increased depth. Because what's gonna happen is we're gonna paint the ceiling in a lighter contrasting color. And this line right here, this is going to be the same tones of Balfejo wood that you'll see in other parts of the boat. So it'll have a connection as far as color goes and it'll give you this feeling of length throughout the boat and depth. So these kind of elements and these design things are little ways that you can fool yourself to feeling expansiveness. It's also gonna come here 
and hit this wonderful uh, hatch in the middle and it's going to do the same Bao Fe Ho wood tone here. So it's going to be a nice highlight to one of our great elements of this access to outside and all the fresh air that's coming in. So it's little things like this that really count because of course we could just paint our ceiling white and call a day or we can leave it all wood where it feels a little bit more closed in and claustrophobic but instead we wanted to make every little part have some sort of detail to accomplish our goal.